this is Chuck from Monocock Metalworks. Sorry, we have not done this in a while. It's uh, just the week before Thanksgiving of 2020. Obviously, we've kind of slugged our way through this year with the coronavirus. Knock on wood, so far we're good. We haven't gotten it. Brent and I have been plugging away in here, kind of getting things reorganized. We did buy and sell a lot of project cars this summer, and we bought two really big batches of used parts and we added that all to our collection so the shop was a mess and we were just working and so unfortunately our little videos slid by the wayside but i thought i'd get that going again get back in the practice and just start out with kind of a reintroduction to our panels um, some of you might be new this might be the first video you're seeing some of you may have missed us you can go back and look at all of our videos there's a few years of these where i talk about things but today I just want to give you a, just a general sampling. This is just some of the panels that we sell. I was putting together an order and I thought, you know what? I'm going to stack them over here instead. Go ahead and do a video. So to start out, these are our outer sills for E-type six-cylinder coupes and roadsters. Um, they are the only correct outer sills on the planet. We went to a lot of trouble to buy the machines and get these done right because the other ones were so bad we just couldn't use them. You're going to see all of our ends are crisp and beautiful. And the biggest thing is that the contour is right. So if you come over here, this is our contour gauge that we went to great pains to make. And you can see that's that is the exact shape of the factory sill. And it comes down here on a curve, but the curve increases as it goes down. This is what all the other outer sills don't do. They just have a standard single simple curve. And so as soon as your door comes down like this, it just it starts shooting in and you can't get the right light line down the side of the car. You look, I'm in the valley. There you go. It is a perfect fit every time. And we go through great trouble and pains to make sure every one of these are right. You should buy all of your panels here because we go to that trouble for precision. But if you only buy one thing, make sure it's the outer sills. All right, there's those. Um, these are mud shields. This is the right hand mud shield. This is the two piece style. This is an exact replica of factory that's in steel. This is the left hand side. There are a couple different configurations there with these bends. This is a 4.2 that is also identical to the way it should be. Here are some gearbox side panels. This is a left and a, oh, I got them out. I went to all that trouble to get them right. I got them out of order. This is a left and a right for a 3.8. You've got your fill hole here, and you've got your speedometer angle drive access hole here. All right, and then on this side, it's solid. Now, we also make it for a 61. The early style is a little bit different. See how it's a little bit longer? You're only gonna get those kind of differences here with the only people that offer that, and we're the only people that really know. When you call these other parts houses, they don't have a clue what you're talking about. Um, this is the 4.2 style. You've got your fill hole in the same spot, but they went and moved the speedometer angle drive to the other side. So there you go. These are also an exact fit. I probably shouldn't say that to every panel. This is another one of our signature items here. This is the main bonnet support member for the lower valance. A lot of people make the complete lower valance. We do not. Um, there are three different manufacturers of it. The skin portion is wrong on all three. Some of them are better than others, and sometimes if you don't have anything to work with, you've got to go with one of them. So call me, I'll tell you which one to get. But the best thing to do is to salvage your original skin, because it's going to be perfect. Do any repairs you need to to that, and we can make you custom pieces, and then install a new main support member. There it is. These are the sill closing panels. We sell them in a kit of eight, or you can buy any ones you want as singles. These rear panels are actually an extension repair piece for the full width thing. When this rusts, you've got to just repair the ends. We make these thicker because that piece is originally thicker. And again, you can see that increasing radius that goes down. These are perfect. All right. 
this is something new we've just started. We've only got the three eighths done. This is the toe panel that goes in front of your feet. This little X here is exact. The shape, the profile, the, the see how you can see a little square there in the center? We came up with a new way to press these to make it perfect. And also the height and width are exact. If you buy these somewhere else, you're gonna have height and width problems. They're usually too wide, and the X in the middle is kind of similar, but not exact like that, all right? We do make a lot of interior things. This is kind of a tricky piece. This is the header panel for the interior of a coupe. So if I were sitting in the car in a left-hand drive, this would be covered in like a tannish felt material, and it goes up here right under the sun visors. This here, we make the center consoles. We didn't have any of the Coop and Roadster in stock at the moment, but this is the manual console for a 2 plus 2. And we deal with a lot of people that are converting their 2 plus 2 from an automatic to a manual. Um, you have to change the tunnel, and you also have to change the console. Now, you don't have to. Um, a manual will fit in there. The 2 plus 2 Auto has a giant tunnel in it. However, when you put a manual in there, the whole interior doesn't come out right. It doesn't look good. And most of the people we deal with already have a car like that, and then they come to us to do it right. So here is the center console piece. The cubby box goes back. It just goes in there like this, and you're armrest is there and then this piece gets covered in leather and goes down this piece gets covered in vinyl we make all kinds of little brackets these are 4.2 um, rear bumper brackets they are riveted into the body and the studs stick out like that these are 3.8 radio console brackets so like if you were in the car they go up to the uh, forward bulkhead screw in up under there these are the main engine frame brackets, I should probably use this one, that go at the end of the inner sill. And so this piece is on the inside of the inner sill, and then this little piece here is on the outside of the inner sill. The dimensions of this are very critical because you're sandwiching a piece in there, and if you don't get it just right, you end up with these too wide or too close together. We've seen that with some of the other manufacturers. We also make it for the 2 plus 2, which has a drop floor. You can see that that's kind of the same idea, but the 2 plus 2 has this big one here. We do make that. All right, coming over here, uh, I'll talk about the bulkhead side panel. This is the piece that goes between the bonnet and the door on the left-hand side. Um, it's got a very precise curve to it. Everything we do here is done with contour gauges that we've refined over the years from the original cars. And then we check that curvature on every piece as it's going out the door. All right, there you go. I don't know how well you can see that. Here's the Here's the front. The curvature of the front and the back are different. And so we've got the front right there. Now this one is for an early car. And it has the little lip here for the um, rubber seal at the front of the door. This is the left-hand side. This is a right-hand side for a later car, like a late 3.8 or all the 4.2s. That little lip is a separate piece that's riveted on. We make it both ways. When you call, we'll ask you what you've got. We'll make sure we get you the exact same thing you had before. Those are the kind of details that we always try to get right. I mean, you're doing it. Why not do it right? Um, here are some bonnet panels. I'll, I'll start with this big one here. This is the wall of the inner valance. Some people call these the air ducts. And so originally... It would have a pressed tubular shape that's spot welded on here. Um, that is a very difficult piece to make. We have made it in the past out of multiple sections, welded it together. It would cost you a fortune to have us do it and get it just right. What we do instead here is we make a whole new wall section. It's got the beaded edge. It's got your little, um, I don't even know what you call these. They're kind of like speed nuts for those screws in the bonnet. You've got your flanges bent over. Everything about it is exact. You will then drill out the spot welds for your tube section. 
sandblast that, maybe hammer out some dents, doctor it up a little bit, and then spot weld that back on here. If you can't do that, send in your old one, we'll do it for you. All right, like that. These are pretty standard panels. These are the left and the right mud shields that go up in the bonnet. That hole there is for the air intake, so they kind of go in there like this if you're sitting in the car. Um, lots of people make these. We are the only people that make them with the proper edging here. There's a, just the right shape to this and also a thickness of the wire. So we see these a lot of times where the wire is too thin. It doesn't look quite right. There's a pair of headlamp diaphragms. I'll probably do another video soon about our conversion kits, but that's a pair of Series 1 diaphragms. They're just right. We make all of the bonded flanges that go inside the bonnet. These are the forward wing flanges. You can see they've got a certain shape. They've got a certain angle. I don't think anybody else makes these. They're a pain. It's almost like a public service making these. Uh, Brent is shaking his head and raising his eyebrows. We don't make a lot of money on these, but a lot of people call for them um, because it's just easier to work with this than something that's mangled up and you don't know what the shape is. So you can see, I just put a selection of these out there. We sell them in a complete kit of all 12, or you can call and get any single one that you want. Uh, this is a piece that was ready to go out for an order. Brent just made just put the fingerprints on it. This is the rear lower tonneau for a Series 2 coupe. Um, we are very particular about these. This curve around the rear hatch has got to be right, and not just this shape. It's got to be right this way. And then your bumper seam has to be right. And this can't be too shallow. It's all got to be just right. So I don't know if you can tell, we make these ourselves on an English wheel. Um, we have flexible shape patterns and contour gauges for every part of it. Nothing goes out of here without my seal of approval. But to be honest, Brent is probably a little better than me at this point. And so um, we both look at stuff and make sure it's perfect before it goes out the door. We get a lot of calls for rear wheel arch panels for the coupes. Coupes rust over the rear wheel arch because they have an inner rear wheel arch that, that traps moisture. Roadsters don't. This is our standard coupe rear wheel arch repair. The curvature here is perfect. The edge crispness is very tight to a 90 the way it should be and not some soft hammered over. These shapes are right, and I, you probably can't see there, but it is also curved this way. There you go. You can see if you lay it on the thing like that. Other people make it. It is a sad state of affairs. It's this sloppy, soft thing that lays flat on the bench. This is how we make it. This is the standard three-inch repair. If you have virgin rust, usually this will do the job because the rust is just down in here. Now, this is the inside. This is a three and a half inch repair for the inside piece. And they go together like that and they are spot welded together. And then you can see up in here, they just start to come apart when they're in the car like that. So it's down in that bottom section where the rust gets trapped. So this will fix a virgin car right here. We get rave reviews about these all the time. I always suggest buying the inner with the outer. Now, if you've got a, I'll always ask you, you know, what are your welding skills? What kind of machines do you have? How big's the problem? Yada, yada. We can make you special pieces. You might say, I'm not comfortable with butt welding this in with a TIG. I don't have a TIG. We'll roll a little flange in there for you, and you can plug weld it along here with a MIG if you want. This is a standard three-incher that we just put a flange on the top. This is an oversized panel that we made. I think somebody called and asked for it and uh, we made the wrong side. But this was on the shelf as kind of a factory seconds because you can see it says wrong dimensions. Um, they wanted to just TIG weld in their own piece. So they didn't need that step flange at the top, but they needed more size. No problem. All right. This one here is a special shape. 
Their rust was bad here, and then they probably had rust that went up higher than normal here. So they sent in photographs with some measurements. We made this for them. This piece has our signature little stiffening rib on it. So not only do we have a stepped flange, can you get that? We also have a rib going in here. Now this is going to stay on the inner wing. Nobody's ever going to see it because it's totally closed in. And this is going to keep the shape as you're welding it in there. All right? So there's, there's another custom piece. This one here is getting ready to go out for an order. This is a much bigger custom piece. This car had been tapped in the rear and it had wrinkled this section here and someone had drilled a million holes in it with a dent puller and pulled them all out. And then they also had a bad repair job here. So this is gonna allow them to cut out all the bad repairs and get this all in one piece. It's got the stiffening rib. I don't know if you can see kind of the, that has got the exact shape. So this is gonna give you the shape you need because a lot of times if you don't have that, this will sink in and you'll lose your hips and you'll find out that, you know, we've seen cars come in with an inch of filler here. So we're always trying to get you just what you need there. Down below the rear wheel arm, very common, is this piece here. This is the repair piece for the rear lower valance. It very commonly rusts here because, like the coupe, but this is the same on coupes and roadsters, we've got a sandwich in here that traps moisture. And you can see this is our inner, matches the outer perfectly. All right, this piece goes way up in there. A lot of people who buy this piece just cut it off here and weld it in somewhere here. But typically if you need this, you're also gonna need this. I tell people when they buy this, don't use the whole thing. Cut it down to just what you need and stitch it in that way. If you want a stepped edge rolled on here, we could do that for you. And then I guess the last piece here is one of our door skins. This is a left hand skin for a series one roadster. The curvature's just right. Again, the curvature's different in the front versus the back. We've always got a real crisp edge for you. We've fine tuned the pattern over the years. Our swoop here is just right. We make these for short wheelbase coupes and roadsters and we also make the 1961 two-piece style, where the top is separate than the bottom and there's a spot welded seam here and the swoop shape is also different. So that just gives you kind of a quick glance at some of the things that were in the packing room today. I threw a couple other extra things out here to show you, but we are here, we are working. I had a customer mention this morning that they were trying to buy panels somewhere else. I don't know why, and they said there's a lot of back order problems. There are no back order problems here. We only sell what we make right here in this building. If we don't have it on the shelf, we make it for you as soon as we get off the phone. So if you're looking for panels that fit high quality and a partner in your restoration, give us a call. We'd love to help. Thanks for watching.